Hello there, and welcome into another episode of Across the Nations, at least nine people's favorite weekly fantasy football broadcast recorded with a webcam. We're still not sold that Brian Barge is a fan. As always, plenty to talk about here on the show. We've got recaps, previews, and a little bit of news, so let's get right to it. back into Across the Nations, and it's time to go around a bottom bat. Not a lot going on in the league this week. Pretty quiet. Did have a couple of name changes to bring to your attention. Of course, Brandon went with a new team name that nobody really understands. Beaches, Babes, and Brandon. So, the alliance lasted a couple weeks. We'll see how long he can live in this lie. Also changing his team name was Austin. Finally getting off of the generic Team Little, he went with Co-Owner. Also not that original, but funny considering the circumstances in which he entered the league. And of course it's nice to be able to have two people to shoulder the blame when things go wrong. Uh, Not a lot of transactions to talk about, although we do have one major one, I guess, that made an impact last week, and that was Brandon picking up Mark Sanchez. A nice move for Brandon. And that gets the Transaction of the Week award here on Across the Nations. Speaking of transactions and speaking of Team Little, We'll turn it over to Austin for a special report this week on Across the Nations. Hi, this is Austin Little, both owners of Team Co-Owner, uh, putting out an announcement to the league uh, that Matthew Stafford uh, is still on my team and is still available to those who are interested. And that includes you, uh, Mr. QB Carousel. Back at you. Thanks for that. I guess we'll just have to move on. Stay tuned as we go into the recap of week three. If last week is any indication, the lines are pretty well drawn for the cream of the crop in the middle of the pack. We had four huge scores, five average numbers, and one really awful performance. Let's start with the game of the week. Co-owner and Call Me Coach took it down to the wire. This matchup was decided on literally the second to last play of the week. Austin had his heart ripped out when my own Rex Grossman was sacked and fumbled to squash the Redskins' chances. As if this wasn't bad enough, the sack lost 7 yards, putting the Skins back under the 300-yard threshold. Essentially, the one play gave Coach's Dallas defense 5 points, enough for a 2-point victory. The bottom bat has already seen its share of thrilling games and heartbreaking losses. This one has to be the hardest to swallow so far. So that game featured the third and fourth highest individual point totals of the week. So who outdid Austin and Aaron? No surprise, Team Jackie Moon and Darren Sharper hold my dick. Team Jackie Moon steamrolled the Japan Seahawks. Don't think you can blame this one on the jet lag. Just Wes Welker's 34 points. So Drew joins Aaron as the only teams to move to 3-0 on the season. Just another day at the office for the Sharpers or the Dicks. I'm not really sure how they prefer to be referenced. Seven guys went for double digits as Hunter stomped Sanchez's dirty. On a high note, Sanchez broke the streak of 75-point gains with a 76-point output after a big day from his kicker. Any way you can get it, right, Brian? Brandon and his all-but-true team name went from being a 27-point underdog to winning by 31 points against the Jockstrap Jockeys. Not because Brandon had a monster week, but because Anthony was inexplicably bad. In the final game, I picked up just enough to overcome the Colonel and run DMC. We'll get to the projections after this. A clean sweep in week three moves me to eight and two on the year for the weekly projections. It doesn't get any easier as week four poses some interesting matchups to be sure. In a battle of teams heading in opposite directions, co-owner faces the Yakoska Seahawks. Seriously, Barge, the pronunciation guide's not getting it done. 
Austin has reeled off back-to-back 100-point weeks after starting the season with a 56-point performance. The Seahawks started strong with a 136-point opener, but have fizzled to a 1-2 start. To make things worse for Eric, he's going to have to find a way to replace probably the most consistent performer on his roster in Kenny Britt. Austin and Austin enter the week as a six-point favorite, and I like them to continue the momentum through this week. The pick is for Co-Owner to get back to 500, but if he doesn't, at least he can share the blame. We've got the lovable losers, uh, sorry, Sanchez is dirty, still searching for a win, and Brandon looking to stake his claim as a contender. While his team name isn't helping the cause for being taken seriously, Beaches, Babes, and Brandon are a serious favorite in this one. Arnold is projected as a 14-point winner despite the Dirty's unthinkable 98-point prognostication. I expect drop-offs from Mark Sanchez and Java Best, but I think Brandon still has enough to get it done. When the schedules were released way back in early September, I don't think many people saw the Jockstrap Jockeys and Colonel Al Gaddafi combining for a 1-5 and five star headed into their Week 4 matchup. Nonetheless, that's where we stand with Jonathan still searching for his first win of the season and Anthony trying to shake off about a bad's first sub-50 point week. It may have been a hangover for the jockeys after the huge win against Darren Sharper hold my dick, but at 1-2 and two, he better hope he can right the ship in a hurry. With the statuses of Cedric Benson and Mike Vick a little hazy at the moment, I don't see Al Gaddafi having a lot of fight in him. I'm going to take Philip Rivers and the jockeys to have a bounce back performance. Call Me Coach puts it the perfect mark on the line against Darren Sharper, hold my dick. What a game this one should be. The two highest scoring teams in the league go head to head in what should be nothing less than a shootout. Tom Brady, Mike Wallace, Jermichael Finley keep filling it up for Aaron, and on the other side, Hunter just gets production from everywhere. Both teams have very favorable matchups for their key players, and this one could come down to Tony Romo's effectiveness as he continues to deal with a broken rib and punctured lung. I think Brady gets it done for Aaron here to continue the hot start for Call Me Coach. I look to end Team Jackie Moon's run at the 72 Dolphins, but the QB carousel certainly has an uphill battle. Things could look very different by game time as I'm currently entertaining offers to bring in yet another quarterback. To this point, though, the market is severely inflated. Based on the current rosters, Drew has the definite edge here. I expect Adrian Peterson is just getting his season started, and Calvin Johnson is absolutely the real deal. Since I know Brandon would be disappointed if I didn't mention it, if I am able to pull off the upset and Brandon holds up his end of the bargain, the three members of the original alliance would be 3-1. This creates a scenario similar to the mess that the Big 12 found itself in with Oklahoma, Texas, and Texas Tech in 2009 when they all shared the Southern Division Championship. If that is the case, we would have to go to the BCS rankings for the tiebreaker. Something to look forward to on next week's episode. That's going to do it for Across the Nations. As always, your rebuttals are gladly accepted.